Welcome back to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. I'm standing in front of what is probably one of the most well-known de Havilland aircraft, the iconic DH-82 Tiger Moth. Over 8,000 of these planes were built and thousands of people learned to fly for the first time in the Tiger Moth. But there's something very special about the Tiger Moth and there's something very strange about the wings of the Tiger Moth. So why is that so strange? Let's go and have a look. If you look carefully at this photograph of the Tiger Moth, you'll notice that this top wing is swept back slightly. Now we're very familiar with swept back wings, even on basic civilian aeroplanes these days. Why do you sweep back the wing? Well, as planes get faster and they approach to supersonic speed, it makes sense to sweep back the wings to delay all the buffeting that you would get as you transition to supersonic speed. But the Tiger Moth only flies at about 100 miles an hour or 160 kilometers an hour. So why would you sweep back the wings of an aeroplane that's only going 100 miles an hour or 160 kilometers an hour? The answer can be found by looking at the evolution of the tiger moth, which evolved from the original moth. So let's have a look at a moth. In the original moth, you had two cockpits. One at the front was for the instructor and the one behind for the student. And in the original moth, the top wing was here, above the instructor's position. When the RAF wanted to replace their moths, they pointed out that having the top wing above the instructor's position could be a safety problem. So how could de Havilland help? So Arthur Hagg, the designer and the works manager, looked at a basic moth and they decided that they could take the wing mounting and move it forward about 22 inches. And that meant that the top wing was no longer above the cockpit. But unfortunately, that also caused a problem. You see, aeroplanes work by making use of the lift from the wings to counteract the weight of the aeroplane. The weight of the aeroplane you can think of as being in a center of gravity and the lift from the wings you can think of as being in a centre of lift. And those two need to line up. You don't want the centre of lift too far forward, otherwise the plane will just fly nose up. And you don't want it too far back either. So we have a problem. By moving this wing forward, the designers had moved the centre of lift forward. So how can they counteract that? The answer is, they can sweep the wings backwards. Let's have a look at how they did that. So what's happened here? What the designers did was to take the basic moth wing, which was squared off, and they cut out a triangular section so that the wings could be swept back. You'll notice here is much less than that distance up there. These are nothing more than ordinary wings that have been swept back. So here we've got the tiger moth with the front wing, the top wing moved further forward, and as a result, the wings are swept backwards and the ribs no longer line up with the direction of flight. So here we have the DH-82 Tiger Moth with swept wings and the ribs not lining up in the direction of travel. Probably unique in any aeroplane, certainly in its particular era. So when you come to the museum, do have a look round and think about the designs. How are things designed that way? How did they end up? 
being built that particular way. And in the case of the Tiger Moth, probably one of the most successful planes that de Havilland built, over 8,000 made and hundreds of them still flying today. So come and have a look at the Tiger Moth and the other de Havilland aircraft at the museum. See you at the museum.